All right, let's go to God's word very quickly. We need to close very fast. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, you do me a favor, man of God. On this case, you, set it for him. You, sit down and play. Glory to God. May the Lord not set you up. <laughs> Amen. First Timothy chapter 4. Are you there? First Timothy 4, and then we need verses 1 to 5. And then we're going to read Matthew. Uh, sorry, we're going to read 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Help me ask your neighbor, what was last time? You read the book of Timothy. Amen. Get an answer. Get an answer. If she's smiling or he's smiling, something is wrong. And that means they are trying. What do you mean by today? What do you mean by now? Glory to God. We must read the word of God. Look at him and say, you must read the word of God. Glory to God. Drop it small. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some would depart from the faith. Now note that word. The Bible says, now the Spirit expressly says. So what says? Drop it small a little. I just want a background. All right. Now the Spirit expressly says. What does it say? That in latter times, many times you read that scripture too fast. All you hear is that that is a proof that the Holy Spirit speaks. Amen. Am I speaking your mind? You've heard that used to preach before. But the Bible says, now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times. So what he said was what concerned latter days. What he said was what concerned things that will happen after now. What he said is not about present. He's speaking about things that will happen in future. So let's read what he said. He said in latter times, that means in future times. You don't use the word latter again. You lose the word future, all right? Now in future times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to the deceiving spirit and doctrines of demon, verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience uh, seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with times given. For it is sanctified. That word sanctified is the word set apart. Scripture says it is set apart by the word of God and prayer. Second Peter chapter 1 and then verse 19. Are you there? Second Peter chapter 1 and then verse 19. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to eat as a light that shines in a dark place. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. For a few minutes this morning, I'd like to speak on what I've titled the spirit of prophecy. Help me look at him and say the spirit of prophecy. Look at your next favorite neighbor, the one you left your husband or wife to. You, you, you did not talk to them. Now talk to them now. And say, the spirit of prophecy. Of prophecy. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you because the entrance of your word will give light, give understanding to us. Father, desirous souls, we've come to learn at your faith. Father, we come simple at your faith, not because we are foolish but because we know that we are in the presence of him who is wisdom. Father, we access the treasure house of your wisdom. And Father, the purpose for sending this word today will be manifested in our lives. After now, make us all better, folks. Let us walk according to your counsel for our lives. In Jesus' name, and amen. Can I have a believing amen? Amen. That amen did not go to Harvard. Can I have a believing amen? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at him and say the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy. 
Can you pray in the spirit one minute? Vendo livra ko shapali bro kapasia. Mendo livra do shabali. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Maruza vale bro kapale bro sapalia. Hendo yi ka livra to to brada de dosa kapali. Melova livra ko zagataya. Online on site. Pray in the spirit. When you pray in the spirit, it's your preparation for the world. Preparation of your spirits for the world. Limando zambra kale pro calibra de de dos. Liveno ve li valo breke libra do 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 sabalia. Mendo yi kale krato va livra do sepelia. Mendo yi vale valua. Melum vali balo. Mesheke velia. Mendo ye valua. Haye maro saba. Ivano veli aro balia. Ha ye ye kapaswata. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. I want to say today, I want to say some things to you with evidences with evidences. I want to say some things to you with evidences. All right? I'm not going to use these books to preach. But I want you to see these books uh, before I continue. Look at this book. This book I had, you see, 2008. It's written on in Bodley. This book, I love it more than all my clothes put together because all of my life, all that I'm doing now is in this book. Uh, I call it the scrolls. You know, Paul wrote to the church and he said they should bring, he wrote to Timothy, I said, when you come, bring the parchment for me. Uh, he was, and the scrolls. He was talking about the book about his life. If I travel, I mean, when I moved to Lagos, I did not bring this with other things. I brought it myself. Because the TV can break on the road. But this one must come with me. I'm going to say some things to you that if you do not believe what I say today, after the service, you can come, come to me. And I will open this book for you and show you exactly where the Lord said it. All right? Do you agree with what I said? This book is a book of retreat. Over eight years of God's discourse is in this book. Are you following what I'm saying? This wrote 2023, right? This was last year. Uh, conversations with God with last year in this book. And I can, with evidence. This was the year we started the Ransom House. And this is 2022. You see it's written there. And in this book, you will find discussions, uh, variables about God, and the things the Lord said that will happen. Okay. So let me begin to preach. That is just um, laying foundation. So that what I say, after service is equal, so possible, uh, you can come, I will show you the page where he said it, and how that will begin to live in the reality. Are you following what I'm saying? What is the title of our sermon today? Today I believe I must open a veil to you, I like a privileged father with humility. I will share with you some of the things the Lord has told me on my journey. I would like you to peek into what I call my spiritual sojourn. I don't want to sound mechanical, neither do I want to sound mysterious. I want it to be as easy for you as it can be. But I like to say that I am born of prophecy, and I live by prophecy, and I walk in prophecy. Those three things, can you say it to your neighbor? I am born by prophecy. I live by prophecy, and I walk in prophecy. I walk in prophecy. I am born by prophecy. I live by prophecy, and I walk in prophecy. Over the night, I had to bring out my scrolls. These are not everything. They are more than these. And I began to read again and again from these books of prophecy, what the Lord has shared with me over the years. And it's just so surreal. I'm seeing that our God is faithful to his words. 
I am amazed at every juncture how God foretold his will. How God said it, and then he did it. If I've enjoyed anything on my Christian journey, I've enjoyed the privilege of hearing God. Listen, dear member of Ransomed House. They are ransomed. One inheritance you have in this house is hearing God. Therefore, I say to you that if they pray, to, if they ask you out, and you say, I am praying for one year, something is wrong. Is it that you are not interested in that person? Or you are not, or you are lying to yourself? Why? Because here, your inheritance is that you hear clearly. Say it loud, my inheritance. Is that I hear from God clearly and expressly. Listen, hearing from God is what determines how far you go in life. Hearing from God. Hearing from God is the difference between life and death. Hearing from God is different between a failed marriage and a successful marriage. Hearing from God is the difference between a good investment and a bad investment. Today, many people are dead. Not because their time had come, but because they did not hear from God. They went on a journey they should not have gone to because they did not hear from God. Sometimes the difference, therefore, between life and death is hearing from God. It will keep you. It will save you. Today, many people are financially damaged, drowned. Why? Again, because they cannot hear from God. Because God wasn't part of the deal for them. Listen, I want to draw two stories right here from my experience. You have often heard me, and so you will allow me to read exactly what the Lord said. Understand that? Because if I say it from my head, then I will add to it. And it's not good to add to God's word. It's not good. Not only the Bible. If God says, go to that place and be in that place. And you get there and say, God said, I should go to that place, be in that place, and begin to dance in that place. That dance is yours. It's not God. So you can say, I was dancing, I was dancing, nothing came out, because you added to the word. You must therefore learn to use God's word exactly how the Lord used it. Are you following what I'm saying? God says, this year, I will send you the bone of your bone. Praise God! Don't say God said he will send me the bone of my bone I will marry this year. He didn't say that. He only said you will meet the person. If you now say you will marry this year, that is you. Is somebody following what I'm saying? You have often heard me speak about my sickness in August 2018. How that the Lord delivered me from the claws of death. But I haven't told you that in May 2018, I, I fell sick. August 2018. But I haven't told you that in May 2018, May is the, is the month that I must appear before the Lord where he does uh, a, an evaluation of my life and an evaluation of my reports. So I remember I was reading last yesterday and I saw a particular year that my evaluation was that I was proud. Are you following what I'm saying? Everything the Lord said showed that he was dealing with a proud person. So he kept telling me, if you humble yourself, if you humble yourself, if you humble yourself. <laughs> you know when the Lord keeps saying, if you humble yourself, if you humble, he shows something is wrong somewhere. May 2018, as I was in my place of, of retreat with the Lord, he said to me, he said, whatever happens, don't be afraid. Don't give room to fear. I am always with you. Did you, know, did you hear that? Whatever happens, don't be afraid. Don't give room to fear. I am always with you. 2018, that same place he said, I will take care of you and your family. You are mine. Don't worry. I have got you. These were strange words. Very strange. Whatever happened. I can go say whatever happens. Don't be afraid. It means some things will happen that will generate fear. He said, whatever happens, don't be afraid. And then he said, I've got you. Little wonder when I fell. It was God that made me stand. Because some people fell like that. I hope when I said I fell, I hope you have heard the story before. It didn't mean that I fell like I fell on a stone. 
<laughs> I, life went out. And like, I, you see when people say I'm dying, they know. Because that day I knew I was going. Because you would know that life, life is palpable. I wrote about that in the book, Only Believe. Faith, life is palpable. You will see it going. So I knew. And then I, I crash landed like a, like a plane. And that was not a testimony. The miracle was that after many years, after many days, when I came back from ICU, I thought I was going to be better. In fact, my wife got worried because I, I came back sicker than when I went. But you know one of the reasons why I was not moved? Because he said, I have got you. You see, the words of prophecy are God's preparation for you and your life. So that when people cry over things that happen, because God has told you beforehand that you are already equipped for the journey. Follow me very closely. Not until I was in crisis does that word make sense to me. Again, people often ask me, how are you able to cope and navigate seasons? For instance, in my former ministry, Rema Chapel. Again, prophecy. On the 19th of July, 2015, I had a dream. And in the dream, I was with my father in the Lord. 19th July, 2015. And I was there, and he was facing me in that dream. And he said to me, he said, I know you are going to go and start the work the Lord has asked you to go and start. He said, but before you go, you will do an assignment for me. That was 19 July, 2015. Follow me. In December 2017, that's close to three years later, he called me, that's my father in Lord, this is now physical, into his sitting room, and he said, you know there is a move of God I've seen in the nations of the world. How young people are just vibrant for God, doing things for God. He said, I would like you to pioneer that move in Ilori. I'd like us to do something like that. He said, go and write a proposal for me. He said, this assignment is very important to me. And this assignment, you must do it. So people ask me, why were you able to do... So that was December 2017. On the 7th of January 2018, we had the first service of the Energized Church. How was that? How did that happen? And I, I, and I was prepared. For two and a half years, the Lord had told me. Why? So I was prepared for it. And this leads me to what is called prophecy. Prophecy isn't just people rolling on the floor. Or being out of themselves talking about God. I wish not to denigrate any move of God. But I'm trying to say that prophecy is not just people who you call prophet and prophetess, who you meet on the mountaintop. Prophets and prophecies is not just people who wear white garments, blue garments, yellow garments, red garments, or evil color with suits or are called bishops. Prophecy is much more detailed than that. Every child of God can move in prophecy. Look at your neighbor and say, every child of God can move in prophecy. Now, let me quickly, by definition, define to you what is prophecy. What is prophecy? Prophecy, at its most basic definition, is a message from God. So what you call prophecy is a message from God. If you have a message from God, then you have a prophecy. When God gives you a word, he gives you a revelation, he gives you a warning, he gives you an idea, an insight, and it is from above, then that's a prophecy. At his most basic definition, prophecy is a message from God. Are you following me this morning? Number two, the term prophecy in the Bible encapsulates the divine communication of God's will. It's, it's when we talk about prophecy in scripture, it is the total totality of the will of God. When the will of God is expressly spoken and said, that's what is called prophecy. Often, the will of God contains the foretelling of the future. Future events are conveying messages of moral and spiritual significance. By this, we must remind ourselves of the major prophets of scriptures. 
We call them major not because of the prophecies, but because of the volume of their books. Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah are referred to as major prophets in biblical studies. Now, these three prophets, uh, they did not only tell us, they, they, they were not foretelling. Of course, there were foretellings in their books. They spoke about the return of Israel. They talk about the coming of the Messiah. That's a future event. But what they also spoke about was to explain what was going on in the present. So if you read the, if you read the books, uh, what you will find is it was talking about the judgments. The judgment of Israel. Why is Israel taken away? It was giving rationale. These prophets were giving rationales for these moves of God. So it's actually the communication of God's will. Before Israel was taken into slavery, they foretold it. Number three, what is prophecy? It's a message of truth, of God's revealed will. That's why we say Bible is prophecy. Because it's the revealed truth that communicates the will of God. That tells you of the will of God. All right? When God's will is revealed, then it's prophecy. God said, this is your husband. Then that's prophecy. You are not married to the person, are you? It's future events, but God has revealed according to his plan, his will, that is his will for your life. That's prophecy. It's a communication of God's will. God says, take that job. Take that job. You have two options. I want to leave Nigeria. I want to stay. God says, leave. Because every time we won't say stay. <laughs> you know the way pastors preach it. We make it sound like God does not want anybody to go. Prophecy number four is a supernatural enabling by the Spirit of God to hear his voice and deliver the message of what he is saying. And that's the office of the prophet. They hear the voice of God. Do you see that now? And then they say to people what God is saying. But you can see that's just an aspect of it. Right? So every one of us will not be called to that prophetic office. But you can hear God's voice. And you can use it for your personal life. Do you believe I can hear God's voice? Do you believe I can hear God's voice? I can't hear you. Somebody's just looking and saying, I don't know. Do you believe you can hear God's voice? Yes, sir. Affirmatively, glory to God. Number five, it's a divinely inspired revelation or interpretation. Remember the story of Joseph? Joseph is called a prophet for a reason. Not because he foretold, but because when they came with a dream, he interpreted it in line with the will of God. And what he interpreted has to do with the future. Don't forget that his, um, Daniel also interpreted the dream also of the king. And he told the king, he said, listen, you have been weighed in the balance. And uh, no, that, that's, that's not a dream. The king told him about his dream. And he told the, the king, listen, for seven years you'll be an animal. <laughs> so God sent him to the school of animals to go and learn. That's what pride does to you. So what is prophecy? You know what prophecy is now? Now, it is the speaking of God that we call prophecy. If the Lord does not speak, there is no prophecy. It is the speaking of God that we call prophecy. Whenever God draws back the curtain, and we are not in that by time or in time, and we see what the Lord will do in time to call, come, we call it prophecy. That means God is in his space, in his own time. But at certain times, he opens the veil and he draws you closer so that you can see what will take place in latter times. You remember 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. So when he does that to you, you call it prophecy. So you can't know everything. But you will know the things the Lord has prepared to, to, to tell you. Is somebody following what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy. If you hear God more, then you must stay in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says uh, that the Spirit speaks out expressly. Now, let's read John 16, verse 13, because this will just join everything together. You know, I said that what? I said that the Holy Spirit is what? The Spirit of prophecy. Is the Spirit of what? Prophecy. John 16, 13. Look at that. 
However, when he, the spirit, look at that word spirit, is a capital letter S. Because he's talking not about your spirit, but about the Holy Spirit. Anytime you read scriptures and you find small letter S, then he's talking about uh, Fisayo spirit. But when you see capital, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Scripture says, however, when he, the Holy Spirit, of, the spirit of truth has come, he said, it will guide you into all truths. Don't forget, prophecy is truth that is revealed. Is that not what we said? The Bible says it will guide you into all truth, for it will not speak of its own authority. That means though the Holy Spirit has authority, yet the Holy Spirit will not speak in his own authority. You know, Jesus has authority on the earth as God, but he never did anything that the Father did not do. Right? So he said he will not speak in his own authority. So how will he speak? He said, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you, can we read that together? He will tell you what? He will tell you what? That's prophecy. Things to come. Future foretelling. How will the Spirit know? Because the Spirit has privilege into the Holy of Holies. So he can hear the communication of the Father. So whatever he hears, he will tell you. This is, what I, this is how I love to say it. You know, people say, you are duty bound to come to work early. Is that not so? The Holy Spirit is scripture bound to tell me what he has heard from God. The Holy Spirit is scripture bound. Because scripture says, and he will tell you. He didn't say he may. He said he will tell you. He will. He is the spirit of prophecy. Say, say, say to yourself, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. is the spirit, the spirit of prophecy. Of prophecy. Now, let me move very fast here. It is not that God doesn't speak. It is that we are too occupied and hasty to hear him. Paul said clearly that the Holy Spirit speaks expressly. And in his speakings, he tells us what will happen in latter times. Glory to God, by the Spirit, I can tell what will happen in latter times. I can tell what will happen in latter times. The person of the Spirit is the person of revelation. Now the believer can know. I know. Some people, have you had people say, I don't know what will happen tomorrow. Stop saying that. Nobody knows tomorrow. Stop saying that. I know what will happen tomorrow. I know what will happen tomorrow. Good things are said of me. Good things are written of me. The Spirit tells me what will happen tomorrow. I'm a child of prophecy. I walk in prophecy. I know what will happen tomorrow. The Spirit of truth, ears of the discourse in the heavens. And in scripture bound, like I said, to tell us. Therefore, by working intimately with the Spirit, we all can gain access to what will happen in latter times. It means if I don't know, there's something about my relationship with the Holy Spirit that I need to work on. I need to work on. The more intimate I get with the Holy Spirit, the more I know. Do you get that? The more intimate I am with the Holy Spirit, the more I know. Spending time in, with the Holy Spirit is not a waste of time. It is me cultivating my hearing. Just worshiping God is not a waste of time. It is me cultivating His presence. You know, just me praying is no waste of time. It is me cultivating his presence. The spirit man doesn't just make decisions based on facts, but based on spiritual information and discernment. You don't make, make decisions based on facts. You make decisions based on discernment. The Jesus place is a living reality. Now, understand that when we started that project, we had 600,000 era in the account. And we are very boastful of our saving culture. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because as a 600,000, compared to how much that came in, we were good spenders of money. We were not wasteful. But according to the demands in front of us, it was a total waste of time. People who have 100,000 don't dream of building a church. Uh, before you say not in Lagos, but now not anywhere in Nigeria. You don't dream of it. So if you see the Jesus place, understand that the capital you saw, the capital for that building was prophecy. The capital because I heard the Lord say it is time to build. And I ask him, How? You know, Mary, you, you give birth, 
Mary said, me a virgin? Go He said, the, he said, ow! He said, the power of the highest. I asked him, how? He said, let me show you scriptures. He said, it is a small thing for the Lord. Jonathan told his armor bearer. He said, it is a small thing for the Lord to save with one or with many. He said, with few or with many. God said, if it is easy, he said, it is also easy for me to build with few or with many. Today, as a testament to prophecy, two buildings from here, there stands a structure as a testament to prophecy. Listen to me. What I had is not different from what the Lord has told you. Today, I want you to understand that it is not coming to pass, not because you are not anointed, but because you don't believe God enough. You have neglected those books. That is why I keep telling believers, you cannot keep writing the things of God on your phone. It can crash. It can be stolen. Even somebody came to this church to steal. I know that that destiny, let's not talk about it, but you see what I'm saying? You have to keep the scrolls. Not Jota. I attended convention, they gave me Jota. I attended wedding, they gave me Jota. Add cover that can last a generation. Or that can last generations. Somebody following what I'm saying? Yes, Dear friends, the more you work in prophecy, the less surprise you are of happenings around you. We are grateful, but we are not surprised. As believers, we are grateful that the Lord did it, but we saw it coming. Do you see it coming? Do you see it coming? Now, I'm not talking about the things that already happened. Do you see those things coming? Do you see the billions in your account coming? Do you see that new job coming? Do you see yourself married in a home with children? Do you see it? If you don't see it, you can't walk in it. Abraham walked with God. And God said, look at the sky. Count the stars. There is a visualization that is necessary to enter into the prophetic future that God has put in front of us. Sometimes just, just close your eyes and just see. You see, as far as you can see, so shall your descendant be. Can I quickly, as I close, tell you the essence of the spirit of prophecy? What are the essence of the spirit of prophecy? Number one, it reveals what will happen. The essence of what the spirit says is to reveal to us what will happen. Every time you have a word from God, you have a revelation of the mind of God. Sometimes we celebrate because we have revelation of scriptures. The same way we must rejoice because we have a revelation of what the Lord is set to do with us. You can know what will happen in latter times, according to 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. You can know because the Holy Spirit tells you. Do you have a word from God? Do you have a word from Jesus? Do you have a word from God? 2022? I told you how something happened after two and a half years. Abby, I told you. The delay is not denial. I keep seeing the Lord doing it, working it out. I believe him. Did anyone come in here and you can still remember a word from God? Is there somebody in this sanctuary who can remember a word from God? You know, the first time you had that word, you are sure. But after six months, you begin to say, maybe I was speaking to myself. Am I speaking to somebody here? Can you just tell yourself those words now? Can you tell yourself those words now? Hey, Amen. Since you are not prepared to tell yourself, me, I will tell you what will happen after now. Is that okay? Uh -huh. Because I saw some of you are not. You're not opening your mouth. Let me tell you what will happen after now. On the 1st of September 2023, 1st September 2023, we were on a mini holiday. Myself and my wife decided to escape from all of that Lagos has in mind. You know Lagos has a lot in mind. So we decided to escape from all that Lagos has in mind. But we're still in Lagos, but at the periphery of Lagos. We were at a place called Whispering Palms, Abadagri. 1st September 2023. And I'll just read what I saw. 
And I saw a vision that day. And in that vision, I saw growth happen at the ransom house. But it didn't happen in our present venue. It was in an open space. And people kept coming. And I saw that the place was not far from the place where we are now. Note that at that time, we had not even got in the land. This was September 2023. If you, have, if you want evidence, I will open it for you. Everything today is with evidence. 2023. There's receipts. Thank you. God bless you. There's receipts. You know, Gen Z, there must be receipts. So there's, there's receipts. We'll give you receipts. And it was close to where we are now. And in that vision, listen to this, our sound and light did not come up. Yet people did not go. And they kept coming. And I heard the Lord say, go back out there. Put your head down. Ministry is for the tough. You've got this, it's going to work. And I started my car and I began to come back to Lagos. He said, ministry is tough, but it's going to work. Listen to this. Whatever happens seven days from now, will be in that facility. Whether you see sound, you see light, you don't see anything, be sure of one thing. People will keep coming and they will stay. Yes, Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You get there and then you start looking depressed. I will slap the depression out of you. Because I live by prophecy. Because I walk in prophecy. Is it trying to prepare our heart for things? No, it is not preparation. This is God's word. Are you following what I'm saying? So somebody said, so, so what, the, what that vision shows us uh, is that everything may not be set in that place. Uh, but what makes people come is God, not the things that are set. You know, we believe the excellence draw people. But you cannot excellence and you will not draw anyone. But I heard the Lord say it is time. Today we stand at the bank of prophecy and I'm here to announce to you it's a new season. It's a season of coming. Of growth and of increase. Of growth and of increase. When we started this church May 1st, 2022, I got home and 32 adults were gathered in this place. And I remember the Lord saved one soul. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I got home. My dad asked me, how did he go? I said, he went well. Ah, he said, how did he go? I said, he went well. Then he said, Luke 421. Give me Luke 421. What is some Hey, Amen. Are you there? And he began to say to them, Today, look at him and say, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. Listen to this. Scriptures are fulfilled. What is scripture? Scripture is prophecy. Prophecy is fulfilled in your very eyes. I want you to do me a favor today as you leave this place. Snap yourself in this auditorium because you will need evidence, receipts in many years from now that when ransom was small, I was there because then people will begin to say, you don't know PFA. You will not begin to argue I was there. I know him. You will not need receipts. You will need evidence. Is somebody following me? Is somebody following me? At that time, you will need what? Evidence. Can I have my phone, please? You will need evidence. Welcome to the season of comings. Welcome to the seasons of coming. Welcome to the season of coming. I want to say to you exactly how the Lord said it to me. Um, he said to me, he said, extend your courts, enlarge your place. He said, move your fences. It is time for more. Look at anyone and say, it is time. It is time for more. Pray in the Spirit one minute. Keep praying the spirits. Give me Luke 12 32. Menda Libra Bosa Palibra So Kapalia. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. Today, this prophecy is fulfilled in your eyes. I come by prayer.
me I come by prophecy I come by prophecy I come by prophecy I walk in prophecy I live in prophecy hey hey I come by prophecy Hello, Shabaya. I live by prophecy. I walk in prophecy. Hey, Barado Sarahia. Hey, Larodo Sara. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name and amen. You know, when the Lord said it's time for more, the church is not an entity, the people is the church. So when the Lord says it's time for more, he's talking about you personally also. Yes, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. we are the ecclesia that makes the church. Is somebody following me? Yes, so I made a mistake before. I said, I said, my dad asked me, that's my biological father. Uh, you know, he's a reverend minister. So he, he said to me when I said, I said, we are 32. He said, ah, he said that is very good. He said, Luke 12, 32. What did he say? He said, do not fear little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What is kingdom? Ijoba. Glory to God. It is time for Ijoba. It is time for kingdom. It is time for what? It is time for what? It is time for what? You need to have kingdom mindset. Do you understand? It is the Father's good pleasure. He's not thinking about it. It is the Father's good pleasure. It is the Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. It is the Father's good pleasure. As I said, I sense the anointing. It is the Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. It is the Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. It's time for more. It's time for more. We are not doing little things anymore. It's time for big things. Yes, sir. You sing in a crazy way, I send you out of the stage. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, you are flat, I hold the mic and I start preaching. It is time for more. It is time for more. It is time for what? More. It is time for what? More. Kingdom mindset. Yes, Until the whole world is covered by his glory. Yes, it is time for what? more. It is time for more. You need to become crazy about this mandate now. You need to become crazy. Tell everybody, some of you drag them. Some of you pay their salary to come. You have to tell them to come. Why? Because it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Around 2.30, he reminded me again of that phone call. And I, I look at that scripture. I say, it's so it, it, do know. it is this good pleasure. You know there are times you give people money and you are not happy. <laughs> there are times I've never given your money like money and I'm happy. Never. You understand that? But there are times you give people money and you are not happy. But God is saying, it is my good pleasure. Have you ever bought drink for somebody and you are thinking, can you take more? Take more shawarma. Take more chicken. Why? Because it is your good pleasure. You want to do it. It is the Father's good pleasure. He's desirous to give us the kingdom. Father's good pleasure. It's the Father's good pleasure. Yes. We will need more chairs. It's the Father's good pleasure. It, it, we will need more people. It is the Father's good pleasure. Money is not the problem. It is the Father's good pleasure. Oh, don't let me jump. I'm coming. I wanted to tell you what God said again. But let, let's go, let's go. Number two, prophecy prepares us for tomorrow. It prepares us for tomorrow. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1, he told them, it really speaks expressly that in latter times, some will be subject to doctrines of error. So that when doctrines and spirit of error comes, we are prepared. We know God has foretold it. We know. There are things that God says. I, I mean, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 14. He said to Timothy, he said, do not forget the gift that was in you by, the lay, by prophecy. Meaning that listen, some things are said concerning you. You are born with prophecy. 
You ask your parents, they say, why am I like this? They told you we were not planning for you. But a prophet came and told us that we'll be pregnant. Or when they gave birth, you say, this one is a special one. That's why I told you you are a son of prophets. It prepares you. When the prophecy comes, it tells you how to prepare. Preparation is a sign that you believe in what God said. If you believe, you prepare for manifestation. God said this year you will have your own car and you are thinking of money. You should be thinking of how to drive it. God told you this year you will leave Nigeria. You should be practicing how you will be working abroad. In fact, by now you should be taking courses of people who get jobs abroad. In fact, take a job from Nigeria. That's a sign. How do you call it? Remote work. Take it. That shows by the prophetic spirit we knew that in these times the spirit of Herod will rise. We know it's a sign that God is coming. Do you have a word from God? It must lead to, it must lead to preparation. If an important guest tells you he's coming to your house, in fact, oh, let me preach it well. If I tell you I am coming to your house, you are going to prepare more. That rock you have never swept, you sweep it. You understand what I'm saying? You will get a drink and you can go and meet your man and say, please, I will just put it here so that it can be cold. You know, my pastor is coming. You prepare. God is giving you a word. It's more important than a person coming. You need to prepare for it. Prepare for its manifestation. Are you preparing for demonstration? Ah, God said, I have anointed you. Prepare. How will you begin to behave when you see healing signs and wonders? How will you begin to behave when the first miracle happens through your hand? How? When you sing and people are slain in the spirit, how will you begin to behave? Begin to learn that culture now. That shows God this person believes what I said. He believes. God said you will be a kingdom financier. You can't give two naira now. You can't give 500 naira now. You are not financing anything. If you finance anything, you are financing your pockets. You prepare. Every time you hear a gift, you give. That's preparation. Are you preparing for ministry, for helping people for marriage? Timothy, by prophecy, was prayed for. And Paul was saying, don't neglect that calling. Don't neglect that laying on of hands. When Baba asked, it's time for energized church. I was prepared. I had almost three years of preparation. Three years. Pam, pam, pam. What we would do was there. Uh, uh, oh, oh, wow, light, everything. <laughs> we were prepared. God had told us. You see, the information the Spirit gave you is for alignment. After that, 19 July 2015, he said to me again, you will be a chain breaker. My wife wrote it down. She nodded her hair like this. He told me. You know what that means? Where I was coming from and where I'm coming from, some people, are, witnesses are here. People don't leave that ministry and have a conversation with my father of the Lord. It doesn't happen. But God said to me, you will be a chain breaker. Spirit, how much chain breaker, baby? I'm serious, baby. If I want a millionaire from him now, I will call him and I will get him. That tells you we are still in good conversation. That prophecy fulfilled. Dear friends, I came by prophecy. May 2019, he said to me, he said, I began your process of separation. He said, relax, I will finish it. Number three, prophecy warns us for tomorrow. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. We were warned. The Holy Spirit will warn us of things to be careful of. Places you should not go. People you should not talk to. Witches you should avoid. Demons you should not collide with. Paul, through prophecy, warned them not to sail. But they sailed. And they lost everything. I remember how the Lord warned me not to travel. He saved my life. Listen to this. We pay a great price when we refuse to heed the warnings of the Spirit. We pay a great price when we refuse to heed the warnings of the Spirit. Number four. Prophecy helps with alignment. John 16 verse 13, the Holy Spirit has had it and then he speaks to you. Do you get that? 
And as he speaks to you, you are able to align yourself to what the Lord has said. So, this is the way God is working. The work of a believer is to just keep jumping where the Lord has put his footprints. That is what we call alignment. The Lord has given you a rail. Do you know train does not decide where he walks or where he moves? Train does not decide where he moves, right? The engineers who cannot even drive a train have built that thing. All the train does is to follow the track. Dear believer, your business is to follow the track. God has already laid the rails. Just follow the track. But our problem is that sometimes in following the track, sometimes the person God says we should marry is too thin for us or too big for us. Or that the job he says you should go and start first does not pay one million. All right? Oh, so it does not look like it. So you cut away from following that track. And I found out that many times when we fall away from following that track, grace brings us back, but we lose time. Grace brings you back, but you lose time. And time is a commodity that can never be recovered. The Spirit will speak, we must hear. He speaks, and what it speaks is the only way we can be in alignment. But what we call alignment is to be in line with the revealed will of God. What we call alignment is to be in line with the revealed will of God. If he has not said it, then you can't align to it. It takes a knowing for me to be able to follow it. So first of all, ask the duty to tell me first. I was in Canaan land, 22nd May, 2023, when the Lord said to me, I will take my gospel in your mouth from coast to coast. Again, he said, he said it again. I will take my word in your mouth from coast to coast. So when I say this is a global ministry, we are not trying to sound like other churches. I'm saying what the Lord has said. I am telling you what the mandate is. I have aligned myself to the will of God. I was with the Lord on 8th of May this year at Redemption Camp when the Lord said to me, again, I will finish the Jesus place. He didn't say, I will finish it. He said, again, because I needed a reminder. He said, again, I will finish the Jesus place. Therefore, people ask me, you are building something like that. You said you are living in July. How do you sleep? Two of us cannot be worried at the same time. Say, cast your burden upon me. And he said, he said, his yoke is easy. His burden is light. I took the easy one. Me, I don't like tough things. That's why I don't take things that are bitter. They say it's good for the body. I don't take it. You understand what I'm saying? I also don't take sweet things too much. I don't take bitter things. I don't like it. All right? I, don't come, I didn't come for bitter life. People say, ah, Nigeria is hard. I don't, I don't know about hard. Me, I don't know. All I know is that easy. Because I have taken the yoke that is easy. And the body that is light. So it can't be carrying it and I will take it. Dear brother, when you begin to worry and, and get anxious, you are no longer working in faith. Because anxiety and faith cannot be in the same car. The moment anxiety comes, faith leaves. Oh, faith has reached its bus stop. It just goes out. So how do I know that I'm not working in faith when I find anxiety in my heart? Any area of your life you are anxious about. How will I pay this bill? Oh, 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 oh. How will I do this? Oh? And you cannot sleep again. Understand you are not working in faith. Faith dropped at Igwefa. You have moved on. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Faith has dropped. It has alighted. You are on your own. Do I get anxious? Yes. When I do, you know what I... It, it, it tells me, it's a diagnostic. It tells me my faith is low. So I get more into the word. I get more into faith. I have faith books. I began to read them. Why? Because I need to boost this thing up. So I can shake. So that faith can come back into the bus. And you see when faith comes back, it by itself, open the door, and anxiety leaves immediately. Today we stand again at the bank of prophets. So that when you go and dance, I want you to dance with that understanding. We are in the bank of prophets. I give you two more. Why do they tell us? So that we can teach others. So that you can tell others. 
Let me say this to you, and I've said it before, that prophecies are generational. What God says to you will have impact in the life of your children. And if he has impact in the life of your children, trust me, that means he has impact in the life of your grandchildren. Because whatever he has impact on you now, has impact on your children. So God's will is generational. Rehoboam lost 10 kingdoms. His son could not reign over those 10 kingdoms. Because he has lost it. What Rehoboam had was what he had. You can't afford to lose prophecy. I taught you that the devil comes to steal words. He doesn't come to steal your head alone. He comes to steal the word of prophecy. Oh, Lenny, but boy, eh? they are not joking. He's a thief. John 10, 10, he's a thief. Don't let him steal the word. Habakkuk chapter 2, 1 to 3. What does that say? Habakkuk 2, 1 to 3. The purpose of prophecy is that you may tell others. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. And what I will answer him when I am corrected, verse 2. And then the Lord answer me. Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. And then verse 3. Who, listen to that. Just stop there. Who will run when he reads it? You? Others. 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 Many people are going to run with your vision. Your vision in business. It's not only in ministry. Your vision for your family. Your vision for finances. People will come to you and say, come and teach us how you do finances. Come and teach us, how do you, how do you, how do you run your home? You must write it down so that you can teach others. On the 3rd of June, 2023, last year, I had the Lord say to me, this is the month to apply for jobs. You remember I said it last year? And many people aligned and they got their jobs. Somebody was sharing with me the obedience in June. You know, in June, I just came here casually. You know, I don't ask for money too much. I'm very shy. I don't know how to ask for money. All of that. And so, I just said casually that if you are moved by God, you can leave all your salary for God. Amen. <laughs> and somebody was sharing with me how that he did that in June. And that by July, they have increased his salary for 120%. I said, ah. Sure, you will not drop for July again like this. <laughs> but if, if he does that, that is me. That is not God. You see that? But you can see. 120% increase. Baby, if they call me that that can happen, I'll give them all the salary, everything I have. Baby, even right now, 120% because that means that I will get that one back with an addition. The economics said that's a way of running things. I can't do that. It takes only God. It is only God. It was Mr. Dyer that came to me the first time we made a seed. For, ah, he said, that's it, work so. I looked at him like this. He said, I, I know what came in. I was looking at him like this. You see when people are telling pastor that kind of thing, something have come in. <laughs> Forget it. Something, if you look at the way he's smiling now, say, he's full. It, uh, listen, if God says a thing and you go on the strength of his word, not only in the mouth of your pastor, but the word he told you and you go in that strength, it can't fail you. God's word is a foundation able to take any kind of building. Any kind of building. The blessedness of obedience. I tell you this because this has to do with all of us. You like what I'm telling you, have you? At 7.20 p.m. on the 21st of December, 2022, I was in Ibadan. You can't, there can be proof. You can go to Google, you will see that I'm in Ibadan. I was in Ibadan 2022 at that time. 21st December, 2022, I was in Ibadan. And I just finished reading the book of Matthew chapter 15. And I had God said to me, I did it once. I can do it again. If I broke seven breads to feed 4,000 people, I can multiply seven people church to a 4,000 person church. Get ready for multiplication. The time has come. That's what he said. That is exactly what Jehovah told me. 
I know it like I know my name. It is time for increase. In fact, I might change my mind. I, I was not named Fisaya Deni because I was, near, I, I was there, but I, <laughs> I was not there. <laughs> I was not conscious when they named me. And I'm sure you are not conscious when they named you. Many of you have so much faith in your parents more than you have in God. You believe your birthday. What if they just decided that, oh, let him just, so that he will not be disturbing us. Let's just give him 15th of May. And you'll be going around saying 15th of May because they just got to NPC that time and say, ah, which one is bad at Say, ah. And they have wrote 17, and you have been going. And if I don't greet you on your birthday, you fight me. But I'm not even sure that's your birthday. You can't defend it that's your birthday. You can't, you don't have receipts. Or some people are now doubting. I say, ah, this man can be correct. Let's leave that. I am saying that God's word is more powerful than that. You know, every one of us have hearings of God, speakings of God. But do you have books like this? Do you read them? Every year I read. I read. I don't read the Bible alone. I read this book through. I read the promises through. Sometimes I say I'm failing because you will fail in some things. You will fail in some principles because our mind can forget. Baba, I'm anointed. Though. You have not seen me. Let's get to Jesus' place. Ah, Meledo Sabaya. Hey! Hey! <laughs> the joy of the Holy Ghost. Ah, baby. <laughs> Your life will change. Amen. Somebody needs to personalize this. That's my time of multiplication. It's my time of multiplication. A time of multiplication. You are tired of saying it. That's how they told one man to hit the rock in Bible. He hit it twice. He stopped. He said, Why did you stop? <laughs> Finally, God speaks to us to equip us. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19, where we began from. Let's read Second Peter 1, 19. The Bible says Ezra 6 14. Just give me that. 2 Peter 1 19. Ezra 6 14. The Bible says they prosper by the prophecies. So we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed unto. Can you see that? He said there is a prophetic word. He said it is confirmed. He said you must do well to heed. If you don't heed it, it will not come to pass. He said, as a light that shines in a dark place. Did I tell you of the day when we were going to get married to this beautiful woman and I did not have money? May the Lord not disgrace you on your wedding day. I did not have money. There was nothing and the day was coming. The day was coming. Everybody was looking at me and saying, I'm going to get married, sir. Nobody was giving me money and I needed money. And this grace was going to come. And the Lord told me, he said, give all you have. You know when he gets, you want to speak it in Yoruba. I mean, I collected the salary. God said, give it. I gave everything. I was not waiting. I was confessing. My tongue was blowing up. I said, God, will you disgrace your servant? I, I said, you told me that you will come to that wedding. And like Cana, disgrace will not happen. Now. Therefore, disgrace cannot happen. Pressure was from everywhere. I said, God, how will you help your son? How will you help your son? I was in that place, just praying, just doing the things I'm supposed to do. One day, somebody say, one day. The prophetic word came. Hey, I was in the bathroom on that day, and the Lord said, from now, money begins to come. Sweetheart, I did not wait to finish bathing. I ran out of the bathroom. I took my phone. I come and I said, God said. Better say it loud, so that if God does not say, he will know that Mutiko is sinking. I said, God said that money is coming from now. He said, praise God. And you know why? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I said, hallelujah. Hallelujah! And you know what I did? I carried a book. I have it. She knows the book. I said, God's prophetic income for the wedding. One. I did. They began to send money because you have to feed the ledger. That's there you are believe. You see, you have the prophetic. You have to heed as a light that shines in dark places. I was not waiting for money to come. I already opened a book. Like this kind of books. If I had known that I would say this testimony to, I would have brought that book for you for evidence. So I brought it, I wrote it down. She knows the book. And I began. And money began to come. People called, called. On the wedding day, I gave my ATM card. 
to Jude Olorumaye, you know him, PJ. Jude Olorumaye on Facebook. I, 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 I gave it to him. He said, I, I said, I call him. 30,000, we draw, we draw, we draw, we draw. He withdraw, and he goes. And I said, ah, oh, Tutu Wale, go back there. You will not be disgraced. We will pay for this hotel. Go back there. <laughs> a pastor called me and said, Fisayo, today's your wedding. I said, yes, sir. He said, I've not said anything. I said, you have not. <laughs> you have not. You called on time. He said, I have your account. I said, I know. Should I send it again? He said, no, I have it. I, have it. I said, thank you, sir. When he came in, I saw the alert. You see, alert was on my alert. I called again. Go back. Then I began to say to the Lord, can we postpone this wedding? Because as the day were coming, the money was plenty. It was more plenty. It was more... I said, God, let's add one more week so I can even declare profit. <laughs> I'm not telling you what I've not lived by. I've lived by faith all my life. All my life. All my life. Life, praise God. I don't like difficult things. People hate me because I did not buy a Micra. I bought a, I bought a Toyota. After I bought an Honda, they did not like me. I do not care. You can believe God for a Micra. I will not. I will not. That's why my wife knows you don't put bitter leaf in my food. What is that? I don't want. My yoke is easy. And my body. I don't take more. I don't take Moringa. My joke is easy. Light. No. Say, the, the, oh, this lemon is good for your health. I don't do. I don't want. My yoke is easy. My body is light. Jesus heals me. Oh, you need to detoxify? Jesus heals me. Jesus heals me. Somebody is putting vitamin C or B on the hair. I expose myself to his glory. My face shines more than you. My face shines more than you. I expose myself to the glory and I come out and light shines upon my face. Fisayo, yes. what is your beauty routine? Glory. 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 When Moses was exposed to the glory, he needed a shade. I will always be luminous. What are you talking about? Somebody say, I'm surprised at your age. Don't be surprised. Because it's the only the white hair. We will look like this for years. Write it down that we said it. Glory. We expose ourselves to glory. We live right. We live only. We stay with one wife. What are we looking for? Don't put your spam everywhere. What is wrong with you? Stay with one woman. If you hear, say, I hear. It's the time for what? Multiplication. Give me extra seats 14. Prophecy equips and empowers. So the elders of the Jews built and they prospered through the prophesying. Not the prophecy. Look at that word. Look at that word. Through the prophesying. Did you pass English? It means consistent and continuous. God gives you a prophecy so that you can be prophesying. God gives you his word so that you can keep saying it. Your prosperity is dependent on your speakings. What I have heard, Jesus said what I have told you in secret. He said declare it in the open. You know how you, I say, start confessing now. Some of you looking at someone on the side, you say, I don't want to say I'm a billionaire. Loud. I'm a billionaire. I'm a... You are not ready. You are not ready. You see all this humility we do in church. I will be married. I'll be. The person beside you is even married. What's your problem? Shout and declare it. If she doesn't want a car, you want a range, declare it. If you are not comfortable where you are seated, find another place in your father's house. But through the prophesying, they prosper through the prophesying. It's a repetitious thing. You don't say it now and stop saying it. You keep saying it. You keep saying it. You love that? Let me give them one more. Isaiah 12, 13. One of God's way of equipping the saints is by sending his word to guide and to ransom them. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent forth his word, it healed, it delivered them. 
from all their infirmities. Hosea 12, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, it was what? I come to you as a prophet today and I say it's your time of multiplication. It's your time of spreading. It's your seasons of coming, sir. People come to your light. When I say come, I say people come into your light. People come into your glory. Your CV, your skills, they are required. Your gift is wanted. I declare your gift required. I declare your gift wanted. I declare it's your season of multiplication. It's your season of increase. It's your time for more. 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 More revelation. More speakings of God. More opportunities. Better relationships. More money. More money. More money. More money. Increased faith. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare every word the Lord has spoken concerning you. It is coming to pass. I join my faith with yours. And I say yes and amen. To every speaking of God. I say yes and amen. To everything the Lord has told you. I say yes and amen. Amen. You will never be small. You will never be small. Though your beginning be small, your latter end will increase. There is increase for you. I declare that your path is the path of the just. It shines more and more and more and more in the name of Jesus. I declare gain speed. I declare accelerate. I declare go forward. 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 Every barrier is broken. Every barrier is broken. Every barrier is broken. Every limitation is broken. Every limitation is broken. Any covering that is covering you from shining, I cut it off now in the name of Jesus. I declare shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. For your light has come. For your light has come. Kings are coming to your rising. Kings are coming to your rising. Kings are coming to your rising. Gentiles to the brightness of your rising. In the name of Jesus. You are called the restorer of paths to dwell in. In the name of Jesus. You are called the repairer of breaches. In the name of Jesus. From now to favor. To favor. To favor. To joy. To joy. I cause every root of depression. Every root of depression. I cut it now. I cut it now. And I say shine. I say shine. I say shine. I ordain this season as your season of divine health. As your season of divine health. Where you have not had people, people begin to speak for you. People begin to speak for you. Where you have not had people, people begin to speak for you. I ordain destiny relationship. Men like Jonathan that will preserve your Lord. Men who will take you by the hands and take you to the place called there. 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare peace in your home. Peace in your home. Prosperity in your palaces. Prosperity in your walls. Prosperity in your walls. In the name of Jesus. Prosperity in your walls. Everything that is yours is preserved. In this turbulent time in this nation and turbulent times in the coming days, I declare you are preserved. I declare you are protected. I declare you are preserved. Everything that bears your name is preserved. I ordain angels assignment over you and yours over you and your family they are watching over you they are watching over you as the mountain is right about Jerusalem so is the Lord right about you in the name of Jesus Shalom is your portion Shalom is your portion nothing missing nothing broken in the name of Jesus Lift up your hands and just wash. You know, things have changed. He said, I will overturn and overturn until it comes to the turn whose right it is. I see the Lord overturning things for you. I see the Lord overturning processes for you. Overturning systems for you. Because it is your turn. Because it is your turn. Whatever you have been chasing, looking for that new job new clients you have been looking for they come to you they come to you they seek you they seek you they seek you I hear God say I will be your announcer I hear God say I will be your announcer. Amen. I will be your announcer. Amen. I hear God say, I will be your announcer. Amen. Your gift and your assignment is divinely advertised. Amen. God said concerning Jesus, He said, Here is my son, a woman well pleased. He said, Hear ye him. That's divine announcement, divine advertisement. I declare the Lord begin to say, In every place, they will hear you. They are hearing you. They are hearing you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You thought it would take you years. You thought it would take you years. That's what I thought too. But I hear God say, I will help them to find it early. I will help them to find it early. The Lord will help you find it early. In the name of Jesus. For the one last one week, somebody has been crying. You've been wet in your bed. People think things are going well. But they are not. God said to tell you, I see you. I see you. He said to announce to you. Online and on site. He said to announce to you. The time of mourning is ended. That your time of mourning is ended. I come as a prophet of God. I come 
as a prophet of God and I announce a new season a new season a season of joy of results of fulfillment of increase of grace of multiplication in the name of Jesus There's such a glory in this house. It's okay to just worship Him.